An experiment is any process with uncertain results. So this could be flipping a coin 10 times and seeing whether you get heads or tails on each one. This could be posting something to Instagram and seeing how many likes you get. There are many different types of experiments you can do. Now a sample space is the set of all of those possible outcomes. So if you're flipping a coin and you're seeing how many heads you get, is it zero, one, two, three, four, five? If you're posting on Instagram, the likes could be a whole number. You could get anywhere between zero likes and in the millions. So here are some pretty basic examples. Rolling a six-sided die once, what are all of the possible outcomes? Well, let's assume that the numbers are one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we can write S for our sample space, and one outcome is one, one outcome is two, one outcome is three, four, five, and six. So all of those are possible outcomes for one die roll. Now, a, an experiment where we flip a coin twice, it's either going to come up heads or tails. So we're doing this back to back. So our sample space is going to be a little bit more than two possible outcomes. We could roll a head first and a head second. We could flip a head first and a tail second. Maybe we do the tails first and the head second, or maybe they both end up being tails. So there's four possible outcomes there. So this is how we get our sample space. Now we might be looking for a particular outcome and we call that an event. We might use the letter E or really any other letter. And this is going to be a subset of the sample space. I'll explain what that means with this example. So here's an event. Rolling an even number on a six-sided die. Well, there's only three possible outcomes now. Either we roll two, we roll four, or we roll six. So this would be the event. Now, what does it mean by a subset of the sample space? Well, if we were to write out all of the possible outcomes for our die roll, we would see here that this is our sample space S, one, two, three, four, five, or six. And the event of rolling an even is right here with 2, 4, and 6. Therefore, all of the outcomes in the event are contained within the sample space. In other words, if you were to draw this out like this, you could always put the event into the bigger circle. What if we have another event? Uh, two heads on three coin flips. So we could think about the sample space and count them up. But let's just think about this in terms of getting two heads. Well, if we have two heads, that means we have one tail. So maybe we get the two heads first and the tail last. Maybe we get a tail in the middle of two heads. Or maybe the tail comes first and the two heads come after. But these would be the only three outcomes where you get two heads on three coin flips. Now, all of these events have more than one possible outcome, so we call these events complex. So rolling an even number on a six-sided die is complex, as well as getting two heads on three coin flips. But what if our event, we'll call this E3, was to simply roll a one? Or let's say, in this case, three heads on three coin flips. Well, if we wanted three heads, we would just get one possible outcome, head, head, head. If this is the case, we call this a simple event, just one outcome. Now, if we have any event defined or two events defined, we can talk about the interaction of those events. So one thing that you can do is you can take what's called the complement of an event. So Let's say we have our sample space S and we have some event E here. The complement of that event, E complement, is basically all of the outcomes where the original event does not occur. So if your original event is to roll even, what does that mean that E complement is going to be? Well, it's going to be to not roll even. In other words, rolling odd. So in this case, if E 
is going to be what we saw before with 2, 4, 6, then E complement is going to be 1, 3, 5. Another way of thinking about this with E complement is to take the sample space and then just subtract everything in the original event. So S minus E. S was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we removed 2, 4, and 6, and that left us with 1, 3, and 5. What if we have two events defined? So let's say our event 1 is going to be roll a 2, and our event 2 is going to be roll 3 or 5. So let's just write this out. E1 would then be the set containing 2, and E2 rolling a 3 or 5 would be 3 or 5. So what the union is going to do is it's going to take our events E1 and take our event E2, and it's going to consider all of these possible outcomes. So this would be like saying, if we take E1 union E2, it's going to be roll 2, 3, or 5. So any of those occurring. So what we're going to get is the set containing 2, 3, and 5. Now I wrote them with a little overlap here. So in this case, there's not going to be anything in the overlap. We'll have 2 there, 3, and 5 there. But if there were something in the overlap, then we could include it as well. We just write everything once. So let's say we have a case where we have E3 is 1 and 2, and then E4 is 2 and 3. And we want to take the union of E3 and E4. Well, it doesn't matter how many times 2 comes up. If it's in there, we just write it down once. So the union is going to be 1, 2, or 3. In other words, we're not double counting. What if we want to take a look at the intersection of two things? So this is the probability, or sorry, this is the, this is the case where something from E1 happens and E2 happens and they're the same event. So in other words, the same outcome. So uh, let's say E1, this is going to be roll and even. E2 is going to be, say, roll a 2. So in other words, we want E1 intersection E2 where both of these things happen at the same time. So rolling an even would get us the samples or the events uh, two four six, and rolling a two would give us the event two. So if we were to draw this out, basically we're just taking a look at where the overlap is. So in this case, with e one, two is in here. Sorry, two four and six are in there. With e two, it's just two. So the common element here is two. So we can remove them from both of these sets there. And our event with the intersection will just be that overlapping region. So this would be E1 intersection E2, which gives us the set containing 2. Now what happens if you have events where there's no overlap? So there's nothing in both events. Well, then we would just say that the intersection of those two events, let's just say E3 and E4, is equal to the empty set. So this just means that there is no event where both of those can happen simultaneously. Okay, let's do a problem with sample spaces and events. A coffee shop has five drinks. Two drinks, one and two, are experimental, and the other three, three, four, and five, are award-winning. We've numbered them for simplicity. A customer tries these drinks in a random order until an award-winning drink has been tried. So in other words, they're going to pick drinks at random until they get three, four, or five. So let's list the outcomes in the sample space here. So what can happen is right away, you just get an award-winning drink. So maybe you get three, four, or five right away, and then you're done. Another possibility is that you get to try drink one first, and then you encounter drink three, or one, then four. 
or one then five. So you get to try one experimental drink first. Uh, maybe you were lucky enough to try two instead. So maybe you do two, three, two, four, then two, five, because you have to stop after three, four, or five. Maybe you were able to drink both of the experimental drinks first. So one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two, five, in that order. Or maybe drink two came first. So maybe this is two, one, three, two, one, four, and two, one, five. So these are all the different possible outcomes. Now we have an event that we want to define. This says let B, which we'll label as B instead of E, be the event that drink five is selected. So what outcomes are in B? So this means we can only take a look at parts of the sample space where we get drink five. So I can just underline these in the original find any event with a five, and then we'll take these outcomes and put them into our event here. So the event that drink five is selected is going to be we drink five, or we drink one then five, or we drink two then five, or we drink one then two then five, or we drink two then one then five. So this has been a video on sample spaces and events. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. But as always, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, share it with everyone you can, and I'll see you in the next one.